Hello. Um, I have been thinking about the kingdom of God. Um, it seems to me that some very liberal theologians and Christians believe that the kingdom of God is going to be like a socialistic paradise where uh, people will worship God, love each other, there will be no poverty, uh, there will be no, uh, no greed, no pride, um, and everyone, everyone who needs anything will, will have it. There will be no inequality. Um, and, I, and I think that the conservative ones, and this might be painting with a broad brush here, uh, but um, believe that it will be a dictatorship. A dictatorship with, with an iron fist of, of God, um, and every knee will be bowing in, 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 uh, in love and terror, um, but saying nothing about, about the lack of injustice, the lack of um, sin, pride, etc., stuff like that. And um, I, I, I get confused on this. I was um, talking with a, a woman uh, on Facebook, and... Um, And I kind of fell into that as well. Um, uh, I mean, I said, like, this is just something from her and, uh, saying, uh, and saying a quote that I had. However, my favorite line of yours is the kingdom of God will be socialistic in nature. When Christ returns to rule his kingdom, there'll be no greed, there'll be no pride, there'll be no need. Black people, white people, people from every nation and tribe will live together in harmony with God and each other. What Bible are you reading from? The kingdom of heaven will not be socialistic. It will be a total perfect dictatorship with God the Father, one and only potentate, God omnipotent, ruling his kingdom. We will be his willing subjects, praising his name forever. And I thought I'd look at the Bible to see which is, uh, which is more like if I'm wrong, if she's wrong. Um, because I think this is really, the way we view the kingdom of God, the way we view the kingdom of heaven, is going to shape how we interact with the world. Uh, if you believe that it is a kingdom without inequality, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of love, and, and that is the will of God that we're doing, then we will interact with the world that way. But if we believe it's a dictatorship, if we believe it's a world where we have to uh, conquer, with this, conquer with the sword of Christ, win uh, converts toward, uh, 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 to, uh, toward our cause, but very like, kind, of, kind of militaristic in nature, we will do that. We become like the God we worship. And that's, I think, is the huge disconnect between liberal and conservative Christians. I mean, I could almost say they're worshiping a, a different God. Uh, it's not true, but it's different aspects of the same God. Does God have wrath? Does God have, is, 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 is the part, part of that? Yes, but God is also love. But if you only do one extent of, at the extent of the other, you're not only getting half the picture. So I thought I'd, I'd look at some of the Bible, what Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Uh, Matthew 19, uh, 24. Uh, uh, when um, Jesus is talking to the rich young man, uh, when he, the rich young man uh, got very uh, sad and went away because he had great wealth, and Jesus told him to sell your possessions. And 23 uh, through uh, 26. Then Jesus said to the disciples, I tell you the truth. It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With a man, with man this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now, is this saying that in order to be a Christian, you can't have any possessions? No. But what it's saying is that when we get obsessed with money, when money becomes a driving factor, when we think more about money than the common good, than God, than a fellow man, then we're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. But the thing is, man is a selfish, prideful, greedy creature. I mean, we, 
uh, that is part of the fallen condition of man. But with Jesus in our heart, we can. And that's why I think, uh, I think that if not socialistic, the problem with Marxism, the problem with like abject communism and socialism is it's the oppressors become the oppressors. The, it's forced. It's forced upon us. But as Christians, we should gladly give, give, give our wealth. We should gladly uh, ha to help other people. Uh, Matthew 21, uh, 43, after the parable of the tenants, where Jesus was basically talking about talking about the Pharisees, killing the prophets, then eventually killing God's son, Jesus. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its food. He who falls in the stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. Now, fruit. Fruit. The Pharisees were very, they claimed to be very righteous people, but they did not produce fruit. I mean, there was inequality. They got rich off the flock. I mean, what we have to do is we have to repent of our ways and we have to we have to just and and that's the thing i believe i believe there's a huge controversy about the social gospel and i believe the social gospel without the gospel of the cross is dead. It's it's not good. It won't work. But just the gospel of the cross, just the gospel of personal uh, restoration, that's dead too. You can't have one without the other. And even Rick Warren said that he's trying to combine both together. But the thing is, The thing is, it, the, these two sides have split off totally, and that's not good either. We need the evangelicals, those who know the good news and preach the good news that we don't have to live in shame and fear, we don't have to fear hell, we have everlasting life. But we need them to teach the mainline denominations that it, that Jesus is. It is about Jesus. Jesus is in the center. That's why I love my church, because Jesus is the center. But we need the liberal and the mainline denominations to help the conservative denominations do more about social justice. Know that the world is faulty, the world is sinful, and that we have to, with God, with Christ on our side, we can change society. It's not going to be perfect because society doesn't want to change. Society doesn't want to change. Sinful society doesn't want to change. I mean, they didn't want to end slavery. They didn't want to end segregation. They don't want to end abortion. Sinful society doesn't want to change. But by keeping on doing good fight, keeping on fighting for righteousness, and righteousness in all, personal righteousness, but also societal righteousness, we can do it. And so, maybe it's not socialism. It's not free market, uh, free market capitalism either. But I think it's more about love. It's more about taking care of a fellow neighbor. And I disagree with some people. I believe the government can, should be able to do that if, small, if churches and if local governments can. I mean, Romans 13 talks very well about the government. And I just want to end with a thing from Acts. Um, uh, Acts uh, 2.44. All the believe... Uh, I froze. Ah, crap! Sorry. Um, all the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as in need. That sounds a little bit socialist, but... It